FBP family, we have an exciting competition running throughout September 2019. You could win a pair of Bose QuietComfort 35 noise cancelling headphones. All you need to do is leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Simply go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash win to find out all the details. Welcome to the industry's leading business podcast for fitness owners and managers. This week's interview is brought to you by friends at Gym Sales. Gym Sales allows you to plan, implement, and monitor a proactive sales strategy that's automated and uniform. Give your sales team the tools that they need to capture, nurture, and convert new members, making it easier than ever before to grow your member base. If you haven't yet checked out Jim Sales, then you need to do it right away. Visit jimsales.net to find out more. Hi, everyone. Welcome along. Before I tell you about this week's show, I first want to give a big shout out to everyone who left us a review on iTunes this week. Thank you to Brooke from the USA, Ben from Australia, Georgia from the Netherlands, Henke from Thailand, and Nicole from the USA. Now, don't forget, this is the last week of our Bose headphones giveaway. So for your chance to win, make sure that you check out all the entry details at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash win. Okay, let's now dive into this week's show. My special guest this week is the founder of Beyond Macros, Matthew Walrath. Matthew teaches fitness industry professionals how to create remarkable client experiences that get results, increase retention, and generate referrals while decreasing admin and marketing tasks. He founded the online nutrition coaching company Beyond Macros in 2016 after being on a consistent wait list as a nutrition coach for over a year. He's since then, he has helped 40 nutrition coaches and counting bring their services online. During this week's show, Matthew starts off by sharing the definition of a VIP customer experience. We chat about the best way to match a VIP experience with your member needs. He walks us through how to pitch the package to new and to existing clients, how it actually increases retention, and for your fit inspiration today, Matt shares three awesome ways to ask your members for referrals. All of that and more is coming up on this week's show. But first, here's a message from our friends at Tribe Team Training. Are you interested in increasing your center's income and your trainer's income from small group training? Tribe Team Training is the new way to get more members engaged in small group training and paying extra. Click the Tribe Team Training link in the show notes or go to tribeteamtraining.com.au forward slash podcast for your free formula to see how much income you can make from small group training. It's now time for this week's episode. And I started off by asking Matthew to describe what it means to create a VIP customer experience. Here's what he had to say. Yeah. So the thing is VIP is an acronym and it stands for very important person. So a VIP customer experience is one that makes your clients feel like they're a very important person. And I like to take this a step further and say that every client should feel like your only client. So that's really the foundation of defining a VIP customer experience. But the thing that's important to think about is that it's an experience that provides more than the client expects. So if a client's coming to you for weight loss, getting them to their weight loss goal, if you think about concerts or festivals, there's general admission, there's VIP, and then there's often the all-access pass. So general admission is getting someone to their goal, getting them to their desired outcome. The VIP experience is one that goes above and beyond. I really like that way of thinking about it. So let's dive into this in a little bit more detail. Talk to us about the best way that we can actually match that VIP experience that you just talked about with our member needs. 
Yeah, absolutely. And this really comes from having a deep, intimate knowledge of your client avatar. That's really the most important thing to match it to their needs. Because just to give an example, if you have, let's say, a exercise studio in a place where you've got a lot of business travelers, a lot of business people, they're looking for a lot of convenient options, then you're going to want to think about the services or products that they're willing to pay a premium for. Like, let's take the business traveler again. Let's take air travel as an example. They're probably someone who's more likely to upgrade to, let's say, economy plus at the low end and pay a premium for that or up to business class. So if you can take the time to think about the additional perks that they get for those upgrades that prompted that premium purchase decision, those are things you can start to think about. How can I adapt that to the service that I provide? I really am a big fan of looking to other industries and people who are doing awesome stuff within businesses and other industries as inspiration to bring into the fitness industry. So I think that thinking about, okay, who is my client? Who's that ideal client I want to work with, especially one who's right for a VIP experience? And what other VIP experiences do they have? It's a really great starting point. So when it comes to diving into that avatar, and we have we have touched on this previously, but are there any tips or tricks that you can share with us that you have found have been really effective for truly getting to know your clients? Absolutely. And it's one-to-one conversations. Uh, one of the things that I get everybody that goes through my certification to do is I, I'm like, you have to get on a minimum three calls with someone that you would consider to be your ideal client. And once you ask them a number of questions to start to understand their goals, their struggles, their emotions, and the context of their life, that's an important one that I think is missed, is the context of their life. What do they do outside of the fitness realm? Then you can actually distill that, take that. And I like to take the time to do a creative writing exercise. I usually set like a 10 to 15 minute timer. And then from there, I'm just going to write everything I can. I, I create a picture of that ideal client in my mind. And I start to write about all the things they think about, about all the things they're afraid of, all these different things. I really try to create a creative story about that client. And by putting myself in that position of writing about their character, then that allows me to really get into their mindset. And then I'll use that anytime I'm creating marketing materials or I'm doing any messaging for that ideal client or that client avatar, I'll read over that creative writing prompt that I did to put myself back in that mindset of who I'm speaking to. I really like the idea around that, Matthew, because I know that all of the work that I've done in the past when it comes to um, developing your avatar or your ideal customer, it's always been quite a structured process of, you know, looking at different categories and building out those categories based on your customer. But I like the idea of adding on this creative writing element because I think it kind of allows you to, I guess, take a deeper step towards understanding their personality and their behavior and, as you say, telling a story about our customer and really getting to know them intimately. So I think that's a really great addition to that avatar um, process. So when we think about this VIP experience that you've been talking about with us today, is that experience something that you just give to your clients as a standard package or is this something that we can actually upsell to increase the yield within our business? Yeah, that's a great question. And there's a number of ways to think about it. If we think about it from, let's say, the concert or the music festival perspective, where you've got general admission, you've got your VIP, and maybe your all access. The VIP is not the standard experience. The standard experience for a concert is you get a ticket, you get in the door, and you're paying for anything a la carte that you want to enhance your experience. Now, with the VIP experience, there's a limited number of tickets. They're not just saying that, okay, we can allow 10,000 people into this concert, and however many want to buy VIP can buy VIP, however many want to buy GA can buy GA. They have an allocation that's probably more like 8,000 people can buy general admission, maybe 1,500 can buy a VIP ticket, and maybe 500 can buy the all-access. And that creates some degree of, let's say, prestige or scarcity to that Mm -hmm. VIP experience, as well as a bit of exclusivity, and it really bolsters 
the fact that this isn't something that's available to everybody. So it is important to recognize that it's not the standard package and it's not something that you have unlimited capacity for. It's something that you want to actually set the cap for because if we're charging a premium for it and it is a VIP experience, again, if we look to another industry, we look to fashion, for example, these high-end fashion brands aren't producing as much as is demanded for, let's say, a Louis Vuitton bag. Maybe mm-hmm. Louis Vuitton's a little different now because they're a bit more mainstream, <laughs> but you know they're not producing to the demand. They're producing under the demand. It creates a little bit of that scarcity in that I this is something that's a luxury and I am going to pay a premium for, and it's not always going to be available. And that's an important thing to recognize about the VIP package. But it's also a really important thing to recognize that even with the general admission people, if you can take some elements of what is a VIP experience and you can bring that into your standard packages, then that's going to create a remarkable experience for all of your clients that leads to referrals, retention, and all end results, those three R's. So, Matthew, if we think about that VIP experience specifically, what steps should we actually put in place in order to pitch that particular package when we've got a new client coming into our business? Yeah, so again, this is the VIP package is going to be one that has a limited enrollment. Because if we go back to the definition I had for a VIP experience, everybody in it is going to feel like a very important person. And so depending on what your team, your numbers are with your team and your capacity is of your team to serve people, or if you're just an individual serving uh, the people in this VIP package, there's going to be an upper limit to the number of people you can serve and Mm -hmm. still have them feel like your only client. So the thing about that is when you recognize that the number of people who are going to end up in this program or who are going to even be interested in it is going to be limited then you can recognize that this is something that you want to sell in a one-to-one capacity. Because again, it's a VIP experience. It's not something that somebody is going to just click on a link in an email and sign up for. They want to feel that experience from the first touch. So if you have somebody that's new and they're coming in, this is really the way that I teach any coach that I'm working with to end up selling. And it's not a pushy salesy tactic, especially with a VIP experience. You want people to, again, feel very important. You want them to feel heard. So you want to get into a one-on-one conversation with that person. You really want to dive into understanding their goals, their struggles, and getting a context for their life. And by understanding those and really drilling down and listening and showing the prospective client that you're listening, you've already provided them value. You've already shown them the value they're going to get with whatever package you're going to end up explaining to them. So from there, it would become a no-brainer decision once you're actually giving them whatever that package looks like. But you always, when you're pitching it, want to take what you've learned from their struggles, from their goals, and from the context of their life. And you want to, instead of telling them the features of this program, you really want to focus on what is the benefit to this person. If one feature happens to really speak to the goal or the struggle that this person has told you about, sure, you can drill down on it, but that shouldn't be the goal with a broad brush. Every single time you talk to somebody about this VIP experience, it's going to be explained to them in a different way because the benefits are tailored directly towards their needs. And because you've gone through this process of understanding who that person is, it's going to be Uh, joining this program, it should really be a no-brainer decision. And you should be converting at over 70% on these conversations. If you've taken the time to properly listen to that client, show them that they're heard, and actually reflect back to them how your program is going to solve exactly what they just explained to you are their pain points. So let's for a second put ourselves in the shoes of a gym owner who perhaps has an established customer base. They might own a facility or multiple facilities. They've got their customer base, but they're intrigued by this VIP experience concept. And they're thinking, okay, what I want to do is allocate a set number of spots to bring either new clients or get my existing clients into one of those packages. Are there any additional tips that you would give us in regards to converting an existing client, a general admission client, if you will, into that VIP package? Absolutely. So 
again, when you create this experience, you're creating it with your client avatar in mind. And if you have multiple facilities, it's likely that you are the leader of the people who are going to have that existing relationship with the members at each of these facilities. If you have a single facility, it's likely that you have a relationship with the members and clients at that facility. So that's the opportunity for you to identify whether that's asking the um, operators of the facilities or whether that's you yourself, identifying the clients who you created this package for. So who are those people where when you created this package, you had their face in mind? When you cr are planning on creating the marketing for this, you're speaking to them. So if you know that you have clients that this offering is perfect for, what you want to do is you want to open up those one-to-one -one conversations with those people first. You don't just want to send an email blast to your entire client list. You Again, you want to make this feel like an exclusive thing. And if this is if you have people who are perfect for it and you have a limited number of seats for it, then you really want to make sure that you're going to get those seats. You want to get the, the butts in those seats to be ones that are going to be results and a transformation story for you. So once you get into that one-on-one -on -one conversation with the people you've identified, again, you go through that process of seeing what their goals are right now. You see what their struggles are. And if their needs that they've just communicated to you line up with what you thought they were and they line up with that offering, then offer it. Put it in terms of the benefits they're going to receive from upgrading from their general admission to VIP. And that's going to be really potent because once you have enough success stories and if you have a community around your gym, then you can celebrate these members and mention that they've gone through this VIP experience. And you can start seeding the idea that this is something that they could potentially do. After you've initially introduced this to some new members, you've got some transformation stories, you've actually seen what this process looks like, you can potentially hire some more people to deliver on this experience because you've got some systems in place and now you've got some individuals that can give individual attention at that premium price point to more people. So you can start to expand it from there. But it's absolutely critical that you get the right butts and seats for that VIP client experience and that you just over deliver, especially that first time. And I really think that your existing clients and your existing members is the best place to look when you're actually looking for people to go through that first round or that beta round. Matthew, do you have any case studies that you could perhaps share with us of a fitness professional who has gone through this process and implemented the VIP experience into their business? Absolutely. And the thing is, the, the people that I work with, the coaches that I work with are all my nutrition coaches. That's really where my expertise is. So that, that's where my example will be. And um, I have one woman who went through my program. And for her, the, the big challenge that I see for any online fitness business, especially a coaching business, is that human connection side of things. You might have the initial call with them. Maybe you have a monthly check-in call if you're doing a real VIP experience. But for the most part, a lot of the communication is either email-based or within, uh, let's say, a Facebook group, something like that, maybe even a group call. And so connecting one-to-one -one with those clients was a bit of a challenge, and it often can lead to some communication issues. So one of the big things that we ended up doing is we ended up having her improve the level of connection she had with her clients by adding in Loom videos with each weekly check-in. Before she ended up creating this VIP package, it was just email check-ins, written check-ins. Um, and as we all know, that's ripe for miscommunication and it lacks that real connection. You're just reading some words, you see an email address, but you almost forget about the person that's behind the typed words. But with those Loom videos, she actually ended up saving herself some time with her check-ins because she could just record the video and in a very organized stream of consciousness, check in on that client, even have a screen share of that client's food journal and really walk them through what she was seeing. And that started to provide more connection with those clients. So all we had to do was add in an extra human connection element. And what we played with was we had her double her rate for her coaching services. Because what I noticed is that the rates she was charging were so low that she would have to be on this uh, client acquisition uh, hamster wheel. When your rates are really low, your profit margins are also going to be low. And 
the, the problem becomes that if you want to be, you know, six figure coach is kind of the standard uh, that people hold themselves to. If you want to be a six figure coach and you're only charging, let's say $120 per month for a service, then you've got to have something like 80 active clients per month that you're working with. And that means that if your average client lifetime is three months, for example, you've got to be getting on something like three discovery calls every single day and converting like 1.3 of those every single day, plus managing 80 something clients. It was just a losing game. But then by implementing that VIP experience, we were able to increase the prices and then therefore decrease the number of clients she had to work with, which meant she had to do less marketing and acquisition activities. So then she could take that extra energy she was putting into marketing and acquisition and put that into connecting with her existing clients, which then boosts the retention rate, which again drops the amount of energy she had to put into marketing and acquisition. So that's really a, a good case study about the ways that a VIP experience increases the retention as well as the results. And for this person in particular, she actually decreased the amount of administrative work and marketing work that she had to do, uh, which I know is really soul sucking for a lot of people in the fitness industry. We didn't get into the industry to do paperwork. And we really got into this industry to actually help people and interface with people and see those transformations uh, in the lives of the people that we work with. That is a great case study, Matthew. And I can also see how easily we could transfer that learning over to a bricks and mortar business. You know, when you talk about the importance of connecting with our members or our clients uh, and then utilizing that, that video for example, as a way to, to effectively get face-to-face. -face. I mean, a personal trainer in a big bricks and mortar business could use that exact same methodology to connect with their customers outside the session times that they're seeing them. You know, a lot of personal trainers will only see their client once a week, maybe twice a week, but why not create that VIP experience and check in with them via video in, you know, midway through the week as it might be. So it's such a great example. And thank you for sharing that with us, Matthew. And in there, you mentioned the effect that it has on retention. Just talk us through that really quickly. I mean, what type of effect have you seen that VIP experience have, first of all, on referrals, but then second of all, on retention? Yeah. So when it comes to referrals, Again, the thing is with a VIP client experience, you are creating those constant one-to-one -one connection points. You're able to make a much deeper connection with every client that is a VIP client. Because again, it's capped on the number of people that you're working with. So by creating those deep relationships, your clients are going to really know, like, and trust you far beyond any relationship they've had with a service provider. And this makes the ask for a referral much easier. And sometimes it just happens automatically. And the thing is, because your clients are paying you well enough that you can give them that careful attention, they're going to have a much higher success rate than, let's say, the general admission clients, because you are guiding them. You know, if they ever hit a snag, you're right there to catch them and to guide them back onto the path. So if we think about it, results plus remarkable experiences and a well-timed ask is the key to referrals. And that's why the VIP experience can really lead to a lot more referrals uh, than if you just have a bunch of general admission people who, when they hit the snags, maybe they fall, they fall hard, and then they fall off. And how about when it comes to retention? How does it affect retention? Yeah, so similar to the reasons that it increases referrals, uh, you're going to increase retention because your relationship with the client is so strong. They're going to trust you more than anybody else to shepherd them to their goals, even as their goals change over time. They might have come to you for weight loss, but then when their goals, let's say, change to some performance-oriented goal, they're going to trust you because you helped them effortlessly get to their weight loss goal and you connected with them over that course of time. So it really becomes a situation where even if you were to refer that client out for, let's say, just a period of time to reach a specific goal that you don't have the technical knowledge for, then they're really likely to come back to you as their fitness quarterback. Uh, for me, for example, I have a client who she's come back to work with me for the past four years. She always ends up coming back despite me referring out. 
she was having, let's say, some gut health issues at one point. So I ended up referring her out to somebody who was a gut health expert. And then once all that was cleared up, she came back to me when she had goals that were not in the gut health realm. And she always came back to me if she was having an issue because she knew I could refer her out to the right person. I became that quarterback. And so there was retention on that level. And the other thing is that with these super fans that you'll create, these VIP clients should turn into super fans. Any new offers that you come out with, they're going to be chomping in the bit for whatever that new offer mm -hmm. is, because they know that, let's say you've gotten someone to the, a goal that they never thought in a million years they'd be able to achieve. And let's say you come out with a new program that's not necessarily something that lines up with their goals. Let's say, you know, keto is popular. Now, let's say you come out with a, a keto program. Um, they're like, oh, I never thought I'd do keto. But, you know, if Matt is saying that uh, this is the bee's knees and uh, this is a new program offering, I'd like to try that because I know that Matt's going to help me do it right. So any new offering is going to look very attractive to those clients that have become super fans. And then if you just compare this, for example, to someone with less guidance, someone in your general admission program, they might still have one-to-one -one interactions. They might still reach their goals, but it's just harder to stay ahead of any dissatisfaction that they might have. So with a VIP experience, you're right there for them. You're guiding them. If they hit a snag, you can get them right back on track, but you might not have that quick recognition for your general admission clients. Um, so it just becomes harder to stay ahead of the dissatisfaction, and that can lead to someone dropping off early in their client lifetime, maybe before they get results, which uh, my friend Marcy Welk, uh, she calls it bad advocates. So somebody who is a negative source of word of mouth. We don't want any of those. <laughs> no. We don't want any of those, but we do want those super fans because we love it when people uh, are just chomping at the bit to take up the next opportunity or the next offer. So, Matthew, it has been phenomenal talking to you about the VIP experience today, and we're going to wrap all of this up in our Fitbispiration. So do you want to leave us today with three effective ways that we can ask for referrals during our member life cycle? We're about to hear this week's Fitbispiration from Matthew, but first, here's a message from our friends at Loud Rumor. Advertising is not expensive. Obscurity is. Being unknown in your own community. And for just $99 a month, you can put an end to all of that. Loud Rumor has worked with over 1,500 fitness studios all over the world. And for only $99, we'll teach you step-by-step -step how to run ad campaigns like some of the largest fitness franchises on the planet. To learn more and get a bunch of sample training videos, go to loudrumorvt.com. Again, that's loudrumorvt.com. Now let's return to the show where Matthew's going to share with us his top tips for asking for referrals. These are awesome. So take a listen. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm not going to answer this in terms of when to ask, because when to ask, especially if you're doing a VIP experience, comes down to your knowledge of the client and finding that opportunity where it doesn't feel salesy, pushy, or unnatural. But the three things that I will say make it really easy to start generating referrals and implementing these things actually increased our referral rate by about 10 times is one, to future pace or coach the referral. I'll explain that, what that means in a second. Uh, two is to make it easy for your client to refer somebody. And then three is to incentivize the referral. So the thing is, going to the future pacing and coaching of the referral. What I mean by future pacing is, let's say early in the client relationship, like right during the onboarding phase, uh, you can future pace by saying something like, since you're about to make this remarkable, noticeable transformation over the next 90 days, people are gonna start asking you questions. And the best way to refer a new client is X, Y, Z. And that X, Y, Z is where you coach the referral. So for us at my company, what that ends up looking like is we say, you know, if somebody notices and they're taking interest in what you've been doing, you can either have them go to beyondmacros.com slash call to set up a call with me or one of my coaches, and we'll figure out if it's right for them. Or if they just seem interested in the macros thing and what you're doing, then we have this free worksheet at beyondmacros.com slash worksheet. And you can just direct them there and we'll pick up the conversation. And then that way, it makes it really easy. So that goes right to point two of making it easy. If you can have 
for a physical business, maybe like a card that has that URL on it or the easiest way for somebody to refer someone in, or you just have a super simple URL. Like those URLs for me are so easy for people to remember. The company name and call, the company name and worksheet, something that if I communicate it to you and you don't have anything to take a note with it, you can remember it. That's what making it easy to make that referral is all about. So that's future pacing, that's coaching the referral, that's making it easy, but incentivizing the referral is like the rocket fuel. You know, that's the fa- those three are the foundation, incentivizing the referral is the rocket fuel. And I love the idea of double-sided incentives. I think back to when Dropbox first came out and they would give you 500 megabytes of cloud storage for free, but if you ended up referring somebody and they signed up, they'd give 250 extra megabytes to you, they'd give 250 extra megabytes to the person who signed up. So for me, I went from someone that was happy that I was getting this free cloud storage to somebody who was an advocate Mm -hmm. and somebody who ended up going from 500 megabytes free to probably 10 gigabytes by the time I'd referred so many friends. So giving somebody a really potent double-sided incentive that makes sense for your situation and your business is really an amazing way to actually get people talking and actively sharing about your business. For us in particular, for any of our, like what we call general admission, kind of our general admission package clients, they only get two calls with our coach. And then from there, just a la carte, they can pay for additional calls with our coach, but they still have uh, the group calls and some other touch base points. But for those people, if they refer somebody in, we'll give them a free 30 minute call with our coach. And then whoever they refer in, will give that person a discount off their first month. So there's a setup fee that includes those two calls that every general admission client gets. We'll actually end up giving uh, 50% off that to the person who they've referred in. And then that person gets an additional free call. So it's a really simple double-sided incentive that uh, we've seen people take advantage of. I love that double-sided referral incentive that you're talking about. Uh, Do you have any examples, Matthew, from a fitness business perspective of what someone might have offered to new clients and the referring client? Yeah. So the thing is a lot of gyms end up having a front-end offer. You know, Mm -hmm. most gyms do, you know, a free class, a free week, a free two weeks. And so that front-end offer is already there. But what I've seen when I was managing a CrossFit gym is that people didn't necessarily respond big time to a, let's say an existing member. They weren't really incentivized that much by a financial uh, referral incentive. You know, we told them that they'd get, let's say $50 off their next month of membership. That didn't really prompt conversations. But then if we offered something tangible, like let's say, you know, if it was $50 off their membership, we got a bag of protein at under $50 wholesale, but we retailed it at over $50 wholesale. So we could give somebody a free bag of protein, or we could give them something out of our retail uh, counter. And that tangible thing actually led to more referrals than that intangible will just take money off your next month, you probably are on direct debit anyway. You don't even notice that you're paying for the for the gym membership. It's just kind of baked in the way that your your income comes in. Mm-hmm. Um, so having that something tangible that they can walk away with was really potent. And then you can also potentially even add that on as a double-sided incentive. You can give something tangible, let's say from the retail section, in addition to that front-end offer you already have for somebody that's been referred in. Because the thing is, the people who are being referred in are going to be more likely to convert into clients. So you're not going to have people taking advantage of it, where they're coming in just for the, uh, you know, one week membership, two week membership, and a free bag of protein. Because their friend has actually validated your studio or your gym, people are going to be more likely to sign up at the back end and a lot less likely to just show up, get a bunch of free stuff, and 
peace out because then their friend kind of looks like a jerk. Mm-hmm. That, it's such an interesting case study to have a look into that and the fact that, you know, people were more inclined to refer a friend when there was a tangible item associated to that, that referral reward. So I find that really interesting and, and great to, to see that insight from your experience as well, Matthew. Well, look, this has been fantastic. I've really, really enjoyed talking about VIP experience. I think you painted such a clear picture as to how the, I'm going to keep calling it general admission experience, <laughs> differs from that VIP. And it makes so much sense for us to look at implementing this uh, initiative into our fitness businesses. So thank you so much for joining us today, Matthew. Oh, it's been my absolute pleasure. Thanks once again to Matthew for sharing such great insights and actions. Now, here's a message from our podcast partner, Team Rockstar Fit. Team Rockstar Fit is an award-winning mastermind team that helps fit pros lead happy and balanced lives. Get mentoring and support. Learn how to grow your business online with Beachbody. You can apply for a free consultation today at teamrockstarfit.com. FBP family, we have an exciting competition running throughout September 2019. You could win a pair of Bose QuietComfort 35 noise cancelling headphones. All you need to do is leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Simply go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash win to find out all the details. Precore Quickfire 5. This week's pre-call Quick 5-5 guest is Greta Wagner, the Executive Director and Senior Vice President at Chelsea Piers, Connecticut. Greta, a warm welcome. Thank you for joining us on the show today. Thank you. I'm a big fan of your podcast and very happy to be here to contribute today. Well, we are thrilled to have you on the show and we're going to start things today with a pre-call Quick Fire 5. So tell us all, why do you do what you do? I've always been really passionate about helping people live healthier lives, you know, whether it's through fitness or sports. I do what I do because I love it and have loved it for more than 30 years. So even on my worst day during my career, I never could imagine doing anything else. When you're passionate about your work, your natural creativity and interests kind of drives you and it drives me and you need that to sustain yourself. Absolutely. And tell us, what's one ritual that helps you become better at what you do? I guess my daily ritual would be that I start my day very early. I wake up between 4 and 5 a.m. every day. What I do with that morning time has changed over the years, depending on where I am with my life. So Greta, what app or system would you use to stay in control of your workload? I use an app called Asana, which is a project management app, and it really helps me get through my day and stay on task. And are there any books, podcasts, or blogs that you would recommend to the listeners today? I'm an avid reader, so I read a lot and I do a lot of audio books, but I also like um, Fresh Air on WNYC, uh, interviews by Terry Ross is a big one for me, Freakonomics, The Radio Lab, which kind of covers a broad serious topics, but in a lighthearted way. Um, And also athletic business podcasts are great. Books, I guess, one of my favorites is Bill Bryson's A Short History of Nearly Everything. I love science, but I don't always understand it. So it's kind of science made easy. They are fantastic recommendations. And I have to agree with that last one because I don't have a science brain, but I was able to read that Bill Bryson novel. So I understand completely what you mean. And for everyone that was listening out to that list, we'll make sure that we grab the details for all of those books and podcasts that Greta just mentioned and pop them in today's show notes. So to wrap up our quick five five today, Greta, just tell us briefly about the topic that you're going to be focusing on during your main interview. I think we're going to talk about how to uh, build and onboard a strong team and how to build strong relationships, which is what our business is about. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to chatting about that topic with you. So thank you for joining us today for the pre-call Quick Fire Five. Thanks.
Thank you for joining me for this week's show. And a quick reminder that all the resources and links for today's episode can all be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Thank you to our foundation partner, Active Management. Active Management are a fitness business coaching company that help clients all over the world. And this month, I have a business tip for you all. Join the Active Management Facebook community. It's an amazing group and you'll meet like-minded fitness owners and managers from all over the world. All you need to do is go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash active management community. It's a highly engaging community where JT from Active Management shares loads of resources, things like photos from inside gyms, reasons to exercise, a monthly book club, challenges, and even ideas under 50 bucks. It's free and it is an awesome community. Once again, just go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash active management community. Thank you all so much for joining me once again today. And as we say goodbye for this week, remember what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others.